guys i'm back i'm so excited to do this um it's been a long time coming for me and my friends um <laughs> me you know a whole mother can you believe it who won it who who won it which nigga little goon getting stew with the onion guys i'm i've been off youtube tube tube i have been off youtube for about a month and i i I don't know. I feel like I've been getting acne and stuff like that because I've missed you guys. I've actually missed you guys. I've seen your comments. It felt so good to put out the last um, I'm pregnant, you know, I'm having a baby video. That was really fun. And I was just so happy that I was able to like get that off my chest. And then it was good because then I could then give birth to my son and then be able to rest because I felt like you guys knew like what was going on. Whereas if I didn't say anything, I'd feel the pressure. Well, zoom into the cup. Shout out to my colleagues. Are you seeing this? Super mommy, that's me. I am super mommy. Sometimes I fly across the sky. Right, okay, okay, right. Right, cool. I asked a lot of you guys to send me questions because I felt like if I didn't ask you guys to ask me questions, we could go off on a tangent and I think I'd miss things out. Cool, so. First question, someone said, oh, <laughs> no, I need to actually relax. I've had coffee and it's 5.30, it's six o'clock in the evening and I've just had a coffee. So nobody's sleeping tonight. My son definitely isn't. <laughs> Banta. Right, cool, right. So first question was, um, is, will you be showing your son in videos as he grows up? No. I do not want to show um, him in any videos because he is my little, I can't even explain. Like, I felt like I'd be more uh. open to show him. But now he's here, no. I don't want anyone to look at him. I don't, when I'm out, I don't even want people to look in the pram. Like, don't put your face anywhere near him. Do you understand? Cool. <laughs> Um, someone said, so happy for you and Lloyd. Thank you so much. Um, did you feel ready to give birth physically, emotionally? Um, this is a good question. No. Do you know what it is? Coming up to my due date, I was starting to panic thinking, oh my God, I actually have to get him out. Like, I know, obviously, I knew he had to come out, but it's actually, she, she, she actually had to deep it. Like, you know, he's actually going to come out of me. And I wanted to do it natural. So I was just looking up stuff on the internet, people talking about how to be, um, uh, how to give birth like naturally and all of these things there. So I was looking up all of that stuff about tearing, your vagina tearing from front to back. Um, I was looking at all of that, um, how to prevent all of them things there. So I think I mentally was preparing myself for the worst that I could probably tear or, um, there might be complications just to set myself up for anything to happen. Do you know what I mean? Because I think sometimes when you put yourself, no, Rhea, that's not what you're supposed to say. Sometimes when you have a plan and it doesn't go to plan and you don't have a plan bare, um, you then can panic. So I kind of just wanted to do it natural. And if I couldn't do it natural, then as long as he comes out healthy and a bouncing baby boy, you know? Um, and he did. He's healthy, completely healthy. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um... Someone said, not a question to be honest, but I hope these few days have been amazing. Um, the first couple of days, I will get into that because they were amazing, obviously, but wow, they were draining. Like, I, I, I feel like now that he's a couple of weeks, I've actually deep that the first two to three, my mouth is dry, bro, hold on. The first couple of days, I was on autopilot, like, Guys, mentally, my brain wasn't with my body. It was like my body was changing his nappy and stuff, but mentally, I wasn't there. It was like I was still thinking about the labor. And that's another thing that's crazy is that like, when you um, give birth, it's like you give birth and then you're straight into being a mum. It's actually crazy. Like there's no break. I am still tired from the labor and it's nearly been three weeks. And I don't think I'll ever get over it, to be honest with you. I'll never catch up with sleep. And that's all right, that's okay, because we're gonna make it anyway. Right, cool. Um, there's a lot of questions, so I'm just gonna try and bash through. No, not bash. Was it anything like you expected it to be? Um, I don't know if she means like being a mom or the labor. Probably the labor. Um, the labor, <laughs> I honestly expected it to be death. And it was. It was, the pain was like 
someone was ripping my insides with their bare hands. That's what it felt like, yeah. And not only were, was it with their bare hands, their, their hands were, were dry, number one, and their nails were long. So they were ripping me apart with dry hands and long nails. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's what, yeah, what I expected it to be was literally that. So I wasn't shocked, which is good. Someone said, was your labor more or less painful than you expected as a first time mom? Similar to the question that I just answered. Um, honestly, you know what's crazy is that when pe when I used to watch people's videos, like labor and delivery videos, and they used to be like, the pain, you can't describe it. Guys, the pain, you cannot describe it. The contractions were the worst thing ever. Pushing them out was fine. Honestly, I didn't feel like it was as bad as the contractions. Obviously, when, when I pushed out his head and that crown of glory, that's... <laughs> The ring of fire, I mean. The crown of glory. I'm turning into my mum. Oh my gosh. Um, the ring of fire was insane. Like when I popped his head out, I was like, oh my God. Like I couldn't believe the pain. It was like someone set my vagina on fire. Literally with a matchstick. It was mad. It was a Maza. Um, Are people lying when they say you forget the pain straight after? No, they're not. Um, as soon as I pushed, as soon as he was out, it was like the pain literally went and then I got stitches, then the pain came back. So no, um, I think, I think that the pain is so out of this world that you can't even remember it. If that makes sense. Like you can't even tap into that kind of pain because it's mentally insane. Like I cannot even remember how it felt because it was that insane, like insane. In I N S A N E with all caps. Insane. Um, any tips? So someone said, any tips you would recommend for during labor and after? I'm um, during six weeks. Oh, that's a really good question. And I wish that, like, I, you know, you know, I wish that I, <laughs> I wish that I, um, took some advice from certain people. But I feel like the internet. Some people are a bit like, you know, natural birth is a beautiful thing. No, it's hard work, baby girl. Right, cool. Tips I'd say, number one is for early labor, get a TENS machine. I'm gonna put the link below for what a TENS machine is. It's basically little, um, I don't wanna say it because I'm so bad at describing things, but they're like little stickers that you stick on your back and they send vibrations to your body, to your back or to your knee, wherever you want to put it. You can, a lot of people use it if they've got like knee, uh, bad knees and stuff like that. So thank God for my cousin because my cousin gave me her TENS machine and oh my God, that for early labor, you need that. Basically you, it's like I said, two stickers, you stick them on your back and it's a, there's a lead to like a machine and it sends vibrations to your back so that you focus more on the vibrations than the pain. Um, so that was really good for early labor when I was in the, when I was in the hospital. Um, because obviously like you just focus on the vibrations in your back. You don't even focus on the pain. But then when the pain got so bad, it was like the TENS machine didn't even exist. I couldn't even feel the vibrations when it got to a point. I remember, um, flying off the bed and the TENS machine went flying and I just thought, oh, what the hell is that? I didn't even remember that I even had a TENS machine on me. So it was really good for early labor because it kind of made me like, keep calm and all of them things there. And um, yeah, it just really made me focus. I'm gonna go into my whole story in a bit. I just wanna answer this question like I'm doing now. Right, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is to, I would say, to just do a research about different types of like how your labor can go. Because I think that I, um, I kind of just wanted, like I said, I wanted to do it natural and I wanted to find out what I could, how I could do it natural. So that was like just trying to bear the pain. So like breathing, I looked up a lot of videos about breathing and kind of like breathing away the pain. So every time I'd get a contraction, I'd breathe like, breathe in for four, breathe out for five breathe in for four, like kind of blow away the pain. Um, that helped, but then guys, when I tell you it gets to a point where you can't even like do that anymore because the pain is so bad. It's like, it takes over your whole body. Like you, with labor, labor happens to you. You just have to go with it. Like you are so out of control. Like your body, your mind is not in control of your body. Like it was, mine wasn't. Like in the early stages I was like, yeah, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was breathing and everything. And then it just took over me. And I was just like, let me just go with it. But in the back of my head, I kept on thinking, Bria, do not scream because that will number one, take more energy. Number two, you're not the only one in the hospital. And number three, it's not gonna help you get through the pain. Um, I think staying quiet for me and kind of just like trying to focus and just be like, this is just pure pains, babe. Like you're at home with a hot water bottle. It's calm, do you know what I mean? Obviously it got to a point where it wasn't, but um, yeah, it was mad. And la um, I say laughing gas, gas and air. When you cannot take the pain anymore, let's say like the TENS machine um, is not working anymore and you can't do it. Get gas and air as soon as you can, as soon as you're allowed to get gas and air because gas and air changed my life. I was out of it, completely out of it, but it, it helped me to um, focus more on the gas and air rather than the pain. Do you know what I mean? So I was able to push out my baby boy with just gas and air. We praise the Lord. Like I, when he came out, I actually asked the doctors, um, did I get an epidural? Because guys, I couldn't even remember. I was so out of it that I couldn't even remember if I asked for pain relief, what happened, boom, boom, bam. Right, cool. So um, let me get to the actual story. So cool. My due date was the, f oh my gosh, when was my due date? My due date was the 3rd of October. I'm out of it. My due date was the 3rd of October, right? So on the 3rd of October, um, I didn't really like, his kicks weren't as frequent as usual. So we went into the hospital and um, the woman was like, we're gonna do a sweep. Now, if anybody doesn't know what a sweep is, it's when they stick their fingers in your vagina and kind of sweep the baby's head, yeah? Cool. So I didn't expect to have a sweep. So after she did the sweep, I felt so violated. I actually got the shock of my life because I was like, my mum was like, do you understand how many times I'm gonna stick their fingers in you? I was like, oh? Like, I mean, I knew that, but I didn't know it was gonna be this uncomfortable. Like. It was mad. So anyway, she did the sweep. We, I went home. Um, they were like, well, you've got an appointment tomorrow cause to obviously monitor to, to monitor him. Um, so go home and see how it goes and rest and blah, 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 blah. Um, so that was the last night that I actually had the best sleep of my life, but we get on to it. Right, cool. So I got went home, had a couple of contractions, but they weren't anything crazy. Um, I was using my medicine ball, yoga ball, whatever called, gymnastics ball, whatever it's called. I was bouncing on it. I was doing like hip thrusts and doing all of that and trying to like get my contractions going. They were nowhere. Cool, so the next day happened, 4th of October. Um, I had my appointment at 3.30, checked Baba, he was fine, um, and then, that flower was massive. No, when I see you again, it's me and you, my brother. Um, cool. Had my appointment. Everything was calm. They were like, "We're gonna keep you." I like. I already. <coughs> we already knew that they were gonna keep me in because, um, obviously, if um you, if you're worried about your baby moving and stuff like that, they usually keep you in. Cool. Boom. So um, we were in like an, an induction ward, right? So this is not the proper labor ward. This is just like the ward where they're gonna induce me, right? So they were gonna induce me, but I was having contractions. They were like, we don't really wanna put, we don't really wanna induce you because um, your contractions are gonna triple, double, whatever, and you might not be able to handle it. And I was like, bruv, I'm Hercules. Like, you don't even know. No, I'm joking. I just wanted the baby out. Like I was like, they were like, are you getting contractions? I was like, no, not really. Just so I could get induced. But they were like, oh, on the monitor, it says you're having contractions. I was like, oh. Because I was just thinking, get him out. Like I'm actually, like I'm one day overdue. <laughs> and I know that people are like two weeks overdue sometimes, but guys, I was over it. Like I just wanted to see his face. Um, and I just wanted to get through the pain. Like I, I hate knowing that something's gonna be painful and I have to wait. Like, let's just do it now. Do you know what I mean? So, um. What happened? What happened? What happened? Yeah, so my contraction slowed down. So the nurse was like, okay, I'm gonna induce you. So she put the, so she induced me by putting gel, a gel in me. Um, and I don't know how that brings, I'll put everything down below because man's is confused, yeah? Anyway, cool, she put a gel in me. And um, I wanna say like a couple of hours after the chur, 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 the contractions began. And um, at first I was like, like I said, I was breathing them away. I was like, woosa, woosa, like, Pain, like my pain threshold is high. Like I actually thought these contractions were the, were it. Like guys, it was just the beginning. Like it was just the beginning. So um, I was getting, so 
before she induced me, or maybe after, I can't remember guys, um, she checked me, I was one centimetre dilated. One. I have to be ten to get his to get him out. One. I was so upset and I remember I was my mum was there, I was crying to my mum, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was saying to Lloyd, get me a C section, like let's go, like get a C section, get me out of here. Because I was so like already, guys, I was ready to already throw in the towel. And if only I knew that that was the beginning. Anyway, cool. So, um, um, before they induced me, we, because it was a normal ward, right? They had normal, like, visiting hours, right? So my mum and Lloyd were there and, um, they were like, no, you can't, like, the, the staff, the staff, the staff that were looking after me in that ward were absolutely diabolical. Number one, there was one auntie, there's a fly in here. I killed it. Great. Right, there was one auntie that was eating popcorn while she was taking my blood pressure. Guys, she had popcorn all over her mouth. Like, am I a waste man in life? Like, I honestly think, like, nobody asked you to do this job. Like, if you're not into it, you don't like people, why are you doing it? And the thing that frustrated me the most is that you're black and I'm black. Like, we should be able to, you should be able to treat me nicely because we're the same do you know what i mean like i see us as family and that's how you're treating me so she that um that one midwife just made everything really difficult because i was trying to tell her that i was in pain and it was like she didn't believe me like i don't know if it maybe was i uh, she free 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 i don't know if it was maybe like i was handling it well or she just didn't care but she fully just didn't care about anything um i had to ask her so many times to check me to check my blood pressure and she would just be like She'd do it and then walk off and then come back five hours later. And I'm like, babe, like, this is my life. This is my life. Anyway, so it was normal visiting hours. So my mum couldn't stay, which was so upsetting because I was like, I want my mum to be there. And anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. So um, they wouldn't let my mum stay. They wouldn't even let Lloyd and my mum swap, like, swap which is so dumb because it's like, you want, I'm only allowed to have one person with me in that ward. Why does it matter if they're swapping over? And she was like, no, you can't swap over. You can't, you can't sit on the stairs. You can't do this, you can't do that. So they just made it more stressful for me and for my mom and for Lloyd because it was just like, we want to experience this together because it's, the, we are, I'm bringing a life into this world. I want my mom and my partner there. Like, can you respect me? Anyway, cool. So my mom left. Um, she was like, I'm going to be local. Like, I'm not sleeping. Like, I, I, I just call me when things are happening. I don't know what accent that is. Cool. Boom. My mom left. Um, they induced me a couple of hours after my waters broke. And when my waters broke, um, my belly, obviously my belly was massive, right? So I couldn't see what it was, as in, I couldn't see the liquid. So I was like, oh my God, is it blood? I thought, I thought like something bad happened, like, because when your waters break, it feels, it doesn't feel like you've peed yourself, because obviously it's not coming from that, from that, from your clitoris. It's coming from your, your insides. So <laughs> when my waters broke, I was like, uh, -huh. like the feeling was mad and it just kept on, it kept on like breaking, like it kept on coming out. And when the midwife came, she was like, oh, do you need a pad? I was like, no Clarice, I don't need a pad. I'm gonna actually swim in this. Thank you very much. Like useless, absolutely useless, less use. So cool, um, she gave me a pad, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, so after that, that's when the pain was becoming unbearable. Like I actually couldn't handle it. And um, the woman who was eating popcorn came and was like, do you want gas and air? That's how she said it. Like I wasn't, like I wasn't in pain. I'm like, yeah, thank you, sweetheart. That would be great. So um, I remember guys, my mom, when, when my mom was there, I was one centimeter, that was about eight o'clock, yeah? Induced me a couple of hours after my waters broke. I was like to them and I was like to Lloyd, shout out to Lloyd. Let me just say something, yeah, shout out shout out yeah shout out to lloyd because lloyd it was just me and lloyd in that ward and everything was happening back to back like my waters were breaking my contractions were mad it just was everything was happening so quick and lloyd stayed so calm he was like do you need anything do you need water like he was just amazing like if i start speaking about him i'm gonna start crying no we stay strong um <laughs> so um I was saying to Lloyd, I need to be checked, I need to be checked. I feel like he's coming, I feel like he's coming, right? And obviously, I feel like when it's your first baby, people think that you don't know what you're talking about. So they're like, no, 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 he's not coming. Like, you've got time. Like, you've only, your waters have just broke. Like, it takes a couple of, like, a lot of people, when their waters break, it might, like, they might give birth the next day. So the woman was like, 
yeah, no, 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 we can't check you because, you know, the baby's bare because your because your hair, because your hair's grown. Rhea, because your waters have broken, the baby, obviously there's nothing to protect the baby, so they don't want to stick their fingers in me just anyhow. So they were like, no, we have to wait till nine o'clock. No, 10 o'clock. We have to wait for till 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Bear in mind, guys, I had my son at 9.57. So you can imagine the panic that when they checked, yeah, we'll get into it, yeah? Should we get into it? Cool. See, I'm leading back because I'm getting comfy. Um... Shout out to Lewis Wave. I'm gonna put the de his details down below. I don't know if he's still selling these t-shirts, but, um, oh shit. These are the t-shirts for his new um, album. Anyway, cool, side note. Cool, anyway, um, so, boom. So they checked, so she eventually checked me because Lloyd, Lloyd was like, no, you need to check her, you need to check her. She's in so much pain because I was grabbing his hand, like, no, it was mad. Like, it was actually mad. So, um, he was like, no, you need to check her, you need to check her, you need to check her. So eventually they checked me. Guys, so remember I said I was one centimetre hmm, at eight o'clock, right? So um, we're going on to the next day now. Because obviously it's 8 p.m. And they wanted to check me at 10 a.m. the next day. Yeah, so I've been having contractions all night, haven't been able to sleep, all of them things there. Um, so I think, they, I think they induced me about one, two. So... About five, that's when it was getting peak. Yeah, about five, six, it was getting peak. And then um, they were like, no, we can't check her till 10. So I had another like five, four or five hours till they could check me. So cool, so they checked me about, I wanna say about 8.39. They checked me, guys, I was six, I was six centimeters dilated. Bear in mind that when you're, sorry, my eyelashes are... When you're four centimeters, five centimeters, that's when they move you to the labor ward. So when they realized that I was six centimeters, they all started to panic. And as um, they told me I was six centimetres, the gas and air finished, the pain that took over my body, because obviously um, my body's got used to um, the gas and air, yeah? So after the gas and air was finished, I said to Lloyd, get me another canister. I was saying to Lloyd, get me another canister like he's got, like he's got gas and air on tap. So um, he got the midwife to get me another canister and she was panicking, like she was trying to like get the canister, trying to help me to, and I was like, hurry up. Like, what are you waiting for? So um, they realized I was six centimeters, so they started to panic. They got me a wheelchair um, and I cannot describe the the journey from downstairs. So I was downstairs, labor ward was upstairs, yeah? The journey from the labor ward to, no, the journey from the induction ward to the labor ward was an absolute blur. Like I, my eyes were, I don't know if my eyes were open or closed, but I could hear us going into the lift. I could hear the midwife talking to people. Um, and it was a completely out of body experience. It was like, my, I wasn't there, but I could hear everything. It was crazy. Anyway, cool, we got upstairs and um, I remember coming off the wheelchair and just seeing bare blood on the on the wheelchair and thinking, oh my God, like he's fully, with well, blood means that he's on his way, babe. So um, I was like, oh, like I had a moment where I was like, oh, I'm mad, like I'm bleeding, this is mad. So I remember um, her, like the midwife saying um, to get onto the bed. So I was, I fell to my knees and tried to get onto the bed. And then she was like, oh, we've got unlimited gas and air here. And I was thinking, freaking fantastic. And that's all I cared about was the gas and air. It was, it was like I wasn't even there to have the baby. The, as long as the gas and air was there, bro, I was calm, yeah? So I was inhaling the gas and air. Yeah, so, um, the gas and air, what was I saying? Yeah, so I was taking in the gas and air. And then I remember feeling him coming. Like I could feel him moving down, guys. And when, before they checked me, so as I got onto the bed, she checked me, I was 10 centimeters dilated. Bear in mind, when I was downstairs about 10 minutes ago, I was six. So you can imagine how much that escalated, yeah? Bear in mind, no one listened to me and no one understood that I was telling you my son was coming and nobody believed me. And this is another thing, it's like, I don't know if it's like, as black people, we hold, we hold, um, we're good at with, ooh, hi, we're good at bearing pain, but it's like, I'm telling you, this is my body. I'm telling you my son is coming and no one's listening to me. And it just really upset me that, it's like, just because he, it's my first child doesn't mean I don't know what my body's doing. Like I'm very in tune with my body. Some people aren't, um, but I'm very in tune with my body. So I know what's happening and I know um, when to push, you know what I mean? So anyway, I just picked my nose, that's disgusting. It's not. Anyway, cool. So um, 
when I got into the bed, I remember hearing, oh, his blood rate, and that's not it. <laughs> his heartbeat has dropped, his heartbeat has dropped. And I, I remember thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, something bad is happening. About 1,500 doctors flew into the, into the, into the um, ward, into my room. And everybody was like, are you ready, Ray? Are you ready to push? Are you ready to push? And I was like, what? Like, obviously I've been telling you that my body's telling me to push, but this is, it's actually come to this point where we're actually going to push. So, um... I was pushing and I remember like making noise and my mom was like, no, 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 don't make noise. Like breathe, like push, use that energy to push rather than screaming. Cause that doesn't make, that doesn't make him come out. So I remember squeezing and everyone was saying, it's just like a big poo. It's just like a big poo. And in my mind, I actually thought I was pooing because before that I had, um, I needed to poo and I couldn't because I felt like, um, you know when like you miss the window to poo? So I was like really upset thinking, oh my God, I'm pooing in front of all these doctors. But actually it wasn't poo, it was actually my son coming out of me. So um, cool, so everyone was like, yeah, push, 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 push. Um, then they flipped my legs, like held my legs up. And my mom was like, push, re-push. And it was just so beautiful. And then um, my mom was like, remember this is gonna hurt, this bit, like his head. Um, remember it's gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt. So I remember I pushed and his head popped out and it was crazy. Like that pain was insane. But I know that once you get past that point, it's like two more pushes and he's out. So like it, like I said, it was two more pushes and his whole body came out and everybody was like, congratulations. Like everyone was saying congratulations and walking around. And I was like, where is he? Like where, what's going on? I don't remember Lloyd cutting the cord. I don't remember anything. I just remember hearing him cry and then going over to like the heater thing, like the, to weigh and me just thinking, oh my God. Like he's actually here. It was completely surreal. And um, I don't want to get emotional because it was, allow it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. No, 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 no. We're not going to cry. No, no, no. <laughs> we're not going to cry. Okay, cool. Just hold yourself together. God, you're a mother now. Like you can't be doing this. Anyway, it was um, a really surreal moment. And it was the most beautifulest thing I have ever experienced. And I felt so powerful after to know that I did that. Like I did that. Like I brought him into the world natural as well. Like how I wanted. And it's like God, I'm telling you guys that like God is so good because I have had like, my pregnancy was really like, obviously I had down days cause that's normal, but my pregnancy was a good pregnancy and I'm so blessed to then have a good labor. Um, and I just felt like everything just matched up together so well. And I'm just so glad that he, he came at healthy. Um, like the next day we had to stay in because I had a couple of tears, not like a full on normal tear, not where people tear normally, but I had a little tear like near my labia, too much information, but I'm just, telling people, you know, because we want to know. Um, so they stitched me up. The stitches were fine. I um, had the catheter after. So that was a bit, to be honest, I actually appreciated that because afterwards, um, you're very, I was so tender. Like my bed, my, my, bad, <laughs> my body was very tender. So it was nice to just be able to rest in the in the hospital bed rather than having to keep going to the toilet and stuff like that and i know that a lot of people said that like afterwards it burns and stuff like that so i was glad that i didn't have to pee straight away because i would have to go hi because i would because i had because i had a catheter um a catheter, if you don't know, is like a bag and it, you basically pee into the bag and it's the, the tube is connected to you so you don't feel yourself peeing. Um, you just have to empty it and all of that. Anyway, so yeah, we stayed in the ward afterwards and that was an absolute hellhole um, because obviously the ward is with babies, pe um, mothers and babies and dads and babies. Um, but the, it wasn't even the fact that it was babies. It was more the like adults that were there just had no like... A lot of people in the wards had no um, respect that other people are there. So there was one girl who had her whole family and like everybody in there till about 11 o'clock, just like shouting and everything. And it's like, this is the time for us to rest. Like I've just popped out my son, let me rest. And then there was another couple on the other side that was talking to their baby, like there was something wrong. Like everything they were saying was a song like, oh my God, look at you, look at your legs. Oh my God, it's just like, can you guys do that at your house? Like the wards, 
the the rooms um and the beds are so close to one another like the only thing separating us is a freaking curtain and it's so thin and i can hear everything and i've literally slept about half an hour while we was in the ward i didn't sleep at all that night um and i just woke up feeling just butters um but yeah so after that yeah we went home and it began like you know us <laughs> being parents it's crazy um i think now that He's um, a couple of weeks old, like I said before. Woo! Because he's a couple, sorry guys, you know, I'm tired. Um, because he's a couple of weeks older now, it's much, it's getting easier because it's like, I know that he wakes up every couple of hours for, for a feed and for a change. Um, and I'm actually exclusively breastfeed, feeding. I'm exclusively breastfeeding now. So um, that has helped. Um, to kind of get him into a routine. It's not a routine, but because he's still a newborn. But it's just easier to know, like, okay, cool. If I put him down at two, at four, he's going to wake up for, like, a feed, whatever. So I can get a couple of hours here and a couple of hours there. Um, but when he was newborn, guys, there was no routine. He would wake up and sleep whenever he wanted. Um, like, sometimes during the day, he'd sleep for five hours or four hours. And then at night, he'd be wide awake for the whole night. So now it's just, like, I'm, I'm just glad that he's got some kind of, like, routine that I can kind of, like schedule myself with so i nap when he kind of naps sometimes um but sometimes there's so much to do like washing the amount of nappies that i change no the amount of times i have to change his clothes sometimes because he just pees up all, all up his back bless him he ain't got a clue um but <laughs> it's just it, it's amazing like to see him he looks like me um bear with yeah i was on complete autopilot i felt like i was you know um kind of winging it going just doing things as as they come and just kind of like trying to survive each day and it's crazy mentally what it's like having a newborn um i don't feel like people talk about this a lot and i i there were times that i i could see why people get depressed and suffer from post um, natal depression because it's real like so before um, my milk came in, guys, I remember I was in the hospital and I had, obviously my milk hadn't come in yet. And they were telling me to like breastfeed him, you know, cause the colostrum or whatever it's called, it's so pure and it's just so amazing for him. And it's like, I'm feeding him, but my nipples are so sore. And it's like, how am I gonna keep feeding him droplets of milk like it's not making sense so the first couple of days i had to give him a bottle um because he was there was a day guys where he wasn't peeing or pooing and to me like i always believe that like when you're a mum you go with your ignition oh my gosh you go with your heart you know what's best for your child because you're their mother so i was like part of me was like no you know the midwives in there but at the end of the day when he, if he's becoming sick or whatever, or he's not sleeping at night because he hasn't peed or pooed, then it's on me. Like the midwives aren't there to, to help me. It's on me. So I was just like, no, I gave him a bottle or whatever. And then when my milk came in, I've been pumping and giving him breasts and da, da, da. And now it's like my flow is fantastic. Um, so it's, but I did have a day where I did, um, I was up all night with him and I literally looked up to the sky and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and that's another thing when your milk comes in you're so emotional it's crazy and it's good because it's like my mum if I get onto my mum my mum is by far the best thing not even since sliced bread because sliced bread not even that great like since like fried chicken like since rice and peas my mum is an absolute godsend because my mum would say to me like okay cool fourth day your milk's gonna come in you're gonna feel emotional so i'd know like okay cool to tap in with um the fact that i'm feeling emotional because of this and because of that so my mom really did help me she's been an amazing grandma i can't even get into words about like the shifts that me and her have done like um during the evenings and stuff like she's literally helped me she'll be like i've got him you go and nap and it's really helped me to like I have a couple of hours and I'll wake up and be like, oh my God, I feel like a new person. And it's only, I've only had three hours sleep, but it's literally fantastic. So yeah, I'm gonna maybe answer a couple more questions. There's so many, you know what I might do? I might put these on Instagram and ask, answer any of the ones I haven't. Um, uh, is the whole thing about unconditional love when you give birth true? Um, at first, like I was so tired, guys, that I couldn't really tap into my emotions, if that makes sense. Like I'd look at him and be like, oh my God, you're here. But I was so tired that I was kind of like, 
I just want to sleep. That's all I want to do is sleep and was focusing on the fact that I'm just really tired and drained and still not over the labour and blah, blah, blah. But now, like I said, he's older. I cannot. Sometimes I look at him, I just want to eat his face, like his feet, his hands. I cannot. The smell of him, his neck here is so soft. I can't. Um, someone said, how long was you in labour for? I was basically in labour for 24 hours, should we say. Um, maybe even less than that. But active labour was about four hours. Like the full on, and then um, so at nine o'clock they brought me up to labour ward, and I had him at nine fifty seven. So it was literally an hour of active labour. Yeah, cool. Um, how painful was labour, sis? Lol, can't even answer that. I told you guys it was like a burning fire. Um, how are you adapting to your new lifestyle? I feel like I'm adapting better now. I've realised that I need to get fresh air every day. So me and um, the babes, we go for a walk and everything every day. Um, just getting outside and just feeling normal is so important to me because you can really get cabin fever just staying indoors all day. And don't listen to anyone who's like, oh my God, he's only two weeks old. Yeah, so like he's not going to die. Fresh air will literally help both of us to survive because being in the house all day is not, it cannot, it's not fun all the time. Um, was your birthing partner a good one or would you pick someone else for next time? Birthing partner was fantastic. Lloyd, an absolute godsend. Um, he was just fantastic. Wouldn't pick anyone else. Obviously my mum. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he was amazing. He stayed calm. Everyone was like, after, God, he's so calm. Like, that's Lloyd for you. Um, how do you feel once you saw your baby? I felt it was very surreal. He looked like me and it was weird because I was like, you're a boy but you've got my face and my eyes, it's just weird. Um, but when he cries, he looks like Lloyd, and when he smiles, he looks like Lloyd. So I feel like he's gonna end up looking like Lloyd, but I held him for 10 months in my stomach, so he better look like me, do you know what I mean? Um, is the pain bearable? Yes, it is. Um, I just think that you need to understand that what the pain, like the pain is for your baby. You're not gonna have him and still be like in that pain. Bear in mind that you do get contractions afterwards, guys. Did you know that? Like when I was breastfeeding him, my I would get contractions still because my uterus was trying to get back to its normal size, which is mad. Um, so do your research because a lot of things happen to your body and you should just know what's happening and when's happening and da 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 da. Um, last question. Um, bear with me. Loads of people saying congratulations. Thank you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, these are all similar. Now that your mom. Someone said now that your mom was your outlook on life. Just to understand that um, life is such a blessing, and my job now is to protect my son and to teach him how to be um, a respectful man, a boy man, and just, it's taught me how to be patient. It's taught me how that he is in control of my body now. Like my boobs aren't mine anymore. I say that all the time. But, um, and did I get pain relief? Nope, I didn't get any pain relief. Um, if I was in tap with my mind, then maybe. <laughs> um, Bim said, were you angry in labour? No, I was actually really calm, um, somewhat. I was just emotional. Like I kept saying to Lord, I can't do this, can't do this, I can't do this. And I was six centimetres by then, so I could obviously do it. So it's just funny. Um, and someone said, you put, did you push? Do you remember all of it? Yeah, I remember every single bit of it. Obviously the bit when I was in the lift and stuff, I can't remember guys. But yeah, that's it. I might put some of the questions on Instagram, some of the questions that I didn't answer, but they were all very similar, like how was the labor, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, yeah, I'm adapting well. I feel myself, feeling like myself again. I've been putting on makeup and going out and stuff like that, living my life, do you know what I mean? Um, but I am just so thankful for you guys and just thankful that he is here, finally, and he's healthy and we are healthy and we are blessed. We are great so yeah thank you guys um for the love and everything i hope you all have a great week hopefully this video is out on sunday um as in today because i'm filming it but yeah god bless you all and if anybody has any more questions just leave them down below and i don't think i'll be doing any more baby content because it's not going to be like that hopefully we'll be back to a normal schedule next week but depending on how it goes you never know but yeah thank you guys bye okay i'm reloading